All right, uh, chilly shot of New York City there. Yeah, see everybody bundled up like uh, Eskimos. That's because when we're walking down the sidewalk, uh, it uh, you can't feel your face. Seriously, I by the time it's AFA today on AFR Talk. If I didn't say that, by the way, I get to the the, the studio, get into the elevator to come up, and I could not feel my cheekbones. I thought my face had fallen off my body. It was that bad. Kevin McCullough, so glad to have you with us. Uh, we're talking about the uh, financial news uh, that is going on in Washington D.C. and why it matters. Um, the Social Security, I'm uh, not not Social Security. The unemployment benefits uh, are being uh, looked at by sent the Senate. They're sending uh, forward uh, a, a proposal to extend them once again for another three months worth. Uh, and I, I know this is rocket science. I know that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm discovering like a new planet or a new theory of relativity or something here. I understand that. I'm, I'm like practically the smartest person that's ever lived. Therefore, it's uh, important that I be the one that uh, explain this to everyone. But uh, in all, in all honesty, um, how how many months is necessary? We, we have gone from three months to six months to a year to nearly two years now to 26 months that they want to uh, send a check from Washington to a person who is not working simply because they are not working. Uh, and uh, they're saying that it's, uh, it's, it's vital, it's life or, life or death. When you look at the studies that have been done about unemployment patterns, people get very aggressive about finding a job about uh, a month to six weeks out of their unemployment ending. I would think that it's best for the country to encourage that type of activity to occur as fast as possible. Why are we and and where does the endless amount of money come from to be able to do this? That That's question number one. Uh, question number two or issue number two related to the economics of today's, you know, economy. Um, I'm, I'm getting this email yesterday from a, a listener named Millicent. I don't know where Millicent lives. But she says, hello, I'm listening to you, and I'm listening to a Christian that is saying that raising the minimum wage will make unemployment rise. Now, let me just state very clearly, I didn't cover unemployment yesterday, so Millicent was obviously listening to someone else. Uh, it could have been Kirby Anderson. It could have been any number of people. I don't, I don't know who she was listening to. It wasn't me. But she was so direct in her question. I feel like, Millicent, if you are listening, I want you to have the answer to that which you are seeking which is hopefully truth. She says, um, I'm listening to a Christian say that raising the minimum wage will make unemployment rise, and he agreed that employers should halt hiring because their workers want and need demand a living wage. She says, as Christ followers, aren't we supposed to be light to show that a living wage is not a reason to refuse to hire? Be Christians, not the status quo. Okay. Uh, and, and Millicent, I, I trust your heart in this. I trust you're asking a, a legitimate question for legitimate reasons. But uh, KMC School of Ep Economics 101 is open for, for class right now. If you raise the minimum wage, Millicent, if you raise the, raise the minimum wage, does that create more money in the uh, coffers of the company or less? Let's just start there. Uh, is that is that a if you raise the requirement by law, remember, government's telling you you have to pay this amount and government's pr uh, providing nothing in return for that law. They're regulating you, but they're not giving you any assistance in making your product more profitable, your systems more efficient, anything. They're not helping you do any of that. They're just saying you have to spend more money. Now, let's let's assume that company A uh, is able to spend a uh, hundred dollars a year. Let's just make it really simple on wages. For all of its people. And let's say it has uh, 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 10 people that work for it. And let's say all of them make uh, $10. Two of them make $20 an hour. The rest make uh, $10 an hour. Now, if you suddenly raise the, uh, the wage of those making $10 to $15 an hour, can you keep all of the six people that are making $10 an hour along with the two uh, management persons that are making $20 an hour? No, you can't. Because if, if $100 is the budget for payroll and you have 
two people making 20, the, the president and the vice president, and then you've got the labor staff, the six people that are making $10 an hour, and you suddenly require the company to now pay them 15 well, they either now are not within their budget or they have to let somebody go. Because the government, even though it's told them you have to pay them more, it hasn't figured out a way to put more money into the pocket of the company. So now you go from six people making $10 an hour to four people making $15 an hour. Now, that might actually be not a bad move for the company because if the company does some examination, and they realize, hey, we, we actually could run a house, uh, a shop, uh, a laboratory, a, a factory for, uh, f- with four people instead of six, then it's an efficiency lesson for them, and they go, okay, we could probably do that. In fact, what they'll probably do is, uh, is, is figure out a way to um, uh, cut back in, in multiple areas. But raising the minimum wage always requires companies that pay workers to do exactly what I just proposed. They either have to raise the wage or eliminate uh, uh, and bring in more money in some way, or they have to eliminate workers. But they have to become more efficient internally. Now, Millicent and anybody else that agrees with Millicent's email, here's what I want to know. And, and maybe you do agree. Maybe you can help me understand. Maybe we can, maybe we can knock this through a little bit because I really want to make sure that I'm not missing something here. If you do this, does raising the minimum wage contribute naturally to unemployment overall or not? She seems to think that employers have a choice that they could in some way just wave a magic wand and raise everybody's pay and that that money just comes from the sky. It just drops. But Millicent, what actually happens is every single person that has to be paid receives that payment from some quantity of earning that that company brings in. Now, in a nonprofit organization, it's by donation. So donations have to go up. The amount of donations or the number of donations has to increase. In a for-profit company, the service or the product that you make, you either have to increase the price of that, which in in that case, now you're hurting the consumer. You're making the consumer pay more for that product to cover the people that are not. uh, And by the way, every time you raise the price, you're probably losing some market share on your product. So when when you force the minimum wage up artificially, you're now saying, uh, okay, uh, we're, we're comfortable with more people being out of jobs or we're comfortable with uh, abusing the consumer, making them pay more for a product that did not increase in value. That product did not, uh, that product did not all of a sudden become more valuable. No, that product uh, didn't change at all, but they have to charge more for it in order to uh, make it uh, possible for the uh, same number of people to, t- to keep their job. This is one of those things, friends, uh, this is one of those things where I think there's a lot of rhetoric about this. There's a lot of rhetoric that a lot of people put out, but there's not a lot of clear thinking about it that goes on. And I, I know it's rocket science. I know I, you need a Ph.D. to understand what I just explained to you. I understand. I get all that. But at the end of the day, isn't it better for us to have uh, uh other ways for people to move beyond the minimum wage than an artificial raising of it by the government. For instance, the free market allowing someone to excel in the position they're in and earn a promotion into a better position. Because the truth of the matter is, no one is, it's not, the minimum wage is not designed for anyone to support a family on. It's not designed for anybody to Uh, live long-term on. Minimum wage is designed for kids, people breaking into the workforce, people that are low-skilled, that are trying to gain greater skill to move up uh, the the ladder of where they work, etc. But it's never been designed to be something that, okay, I get a minimum wage job. I'm I'm content with that. I'm good to go forever. I got a job. I'm flipping burgers at the McDonald's now, and I'm that's that's what that's the end result of what I want to accomplish for all of my life. Friend, that's probably not uh, what would be best in the interest for your own family. But I want to take your calls on it. 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840. 
So we have two things at work here, uh, the, the, the push, the renewed push in Congress to raise the minimum wage and the renewed uh, push in the Senate to uh, extend unemployment benefits. And friends, while we're being told from Washington, from sometimes people of both parties, this is what we have to do, this is what we have to do, this is what we have to do, we're actually going to be hurting the very people that we're trying to help. I would go so far as to say that if you advocate hardcore for a raise in the minimum wage, you actually do want to see people unemployed because that is the provable statistic of what will happen. But that's okay if we have unemployment benefits for 26 months. Why would we ever have to go back to work? 888-589-8840-888-589-8840. A couple of you wanted to weigh in on some of the stuff I talked about in the opening segment. Uh, Let's go to Glenn in Texas. Hi, Glenn. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. Glad you're here. Hey, Kevin. Good to be with you, man. Um, Thanks for taking my call. I just want to start out and say I love you guys, man. You are are the strength of my day. Thank you, sir. Uh, Man, so I understand that Christian, I'm a Christian guy, and Christians need to talk and reason, but there's no reasoning with the guys in Washington, and, and sometimes the Christians got to fight for what they believe in. And I just wonder, man, who's going to lead the fight and the Christians to, to take care of what we got to take care of? You know, talking ain't working in Washington. Well, that's one of the reasons, uh, Glenn, and thank you for that natural setup for what I wanted to uh, to remind people of. Thank you for the call as well. Uh, just fighting about it's not going to solve it either. Really what is necessary is we need to grow a different culture, but we're not going to grow a different culture until we grow different people, and we're not going to grow different people until we really start to get right with God. So pray2014.com is what I want our focus to be for the next year. I want us to get on our knees. I want us to be before God Almighty begging for his mercy and saying, uh, Lord, help us to live cleanly, to think clearly, uh, to be vibrant in this culture, in this community for you. Uh, this week, we are focusing in our uh, prayer focus of pray2014.com exclusively on the idea of trusting in his complete provision. If we will trust him completely, he will provide what we are in need of. That's his promise. The question is, will we, will we trust more in him or will we trust more in D.C.? Or will we trust, uh, you know, for those that are on my side of the, will we trust in our in our uh, uh, theories and, and, and uh, uh, philosophies and, and arguments that we, that we have the ability to articulate. It, no, it's not, a, it's, not, it's not a Republican or Democrat thing. This is, this is a right or wrong thing. It is a, are we walking with God, depending upon God? He still wants us to think clearly about stuff, but that's not going to be our salvation. And we can't really win the fight if we're not the right people, because you can't grow a different culture until you grow different people. So that's what we got to do. Uh, 888-589-8840. Let's go to uh, one other call that predated the minimum wage discussion, and then I'll take uh, all of the minimum wages after that. John in Florida. Hi, John. Welcome. You're on with Calvin McCullough. Glad you're here. Hey, Kevin. It's cold down here. How cold is it where you are today? <laughs> I think it's it's got up to freezing now. It was down in um, 22. You're in the 30s? You're in the 30s? I think so. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, well, okay, forget now. that. If I was in the 30s today, I'd have my swim trunks on walking up and down uh, Broadway. Because <laughs> today, I've got uh, polar ice cap mitts on my hands when I go outside. That's how cold it is here. I wanted to talk to you about that, but um, I don't want you to get mad at me. Um, I, I don't I don't so, get mad at anybody. Okay. Um, I call it mutant weather. It's like um, <laughs> they've changed uh, particles in the in the snow, and they've changed. The, it makes the summers hotter and the winters colder. And they say it changes the particles. The scientists do that. Um, the snowflakes they change their their everything about them, and, and um, that's what's uh, making this um, the way it is. But it's not from carbon, though. It's not just from carbon. It's from Jesus too, because since 2012. Um, you know, Jesus is going to really tighten up on us now because we've got this new administration in heaven. It's called the uh, Administration of Grace and Law. Mm-hmm. And we used to be under grace, but now we've got law up there, too, so we're like double plugged in. We're, hmm. This is the best time in all of history because um, 
Jesus has given us everything he's got. This is the final book in history, and, and people just got to wake up, and they got to they gotta start looking up. All right, John, that's what I, that I'm saying that we need to look up through, uh, through prayer each week, and that's why we're going to make Mondays our, our prayer focus. Uh, mutant weather. Brent, call the X-Men now. We need their help. Uh, 888-3-4-0. 589 uh, 888-589-8840. Let's go to Louisiana, because Patsy's uh, hanging on there. Hi, hi, Patsy. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. So glad you're with us. Well, thank you. Um, I just, this thing with the minimum wage just gives me a case of the rip and reds, because my son, who has been three tours in the Middle East, working as a police officer, was making like 12 something an hour. Now, what makes these people that have not even tried to better themselves get out, think that they're going to make $15 an hour more than a police officer? Now, I just have a high school education and I have a complete understanding of what my expectations are. And if I'm not making enough money in one job, I have always worked two and three jobs. Hmm. Well, and that's true. And, and, and Patsy, you should be applauded for that because that's not the kind of personal responsibility we are trained to think anymore. What we're trained to think now is that we need to uh, ask uh, Washington to give us uh, a check every month for 26 months. For 26 months, we, we have the, quote, right to ask Washington, D.C. to randomly write us a check. That is really odd, and I think it's thoroughly unbiblical. But that's just my opinionated mean self saying that. Kevin McCullough, it's AFA Today on AFR Talk. Coming right back from the frigid icebox that is New York.